Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day and today we are going to be doing a little unpackaging and also a knife upgrade, disassembly, whatever you want to call it. In here are some scales for a knife that I am absolutely in love with since I got it. I actually purchased that knife off of uh, knifesale.com, um, the un or the cutting knife, I guess, the opening knife is going to be my heavily modified Wii Esprit. I did a, a rather unique uh, blade finish on this. It came out interesting, to say the least, but I like it. Uh, it came out diff definitely uh, different looking. And even after all the modifications and stuff, it's still very snappy and the action just keeps getting better and better. So that guy is pretty darn sweet. This is from Barrow Engineering, and these candies are freaking bomb. Uh, so th those will be for me. This is a little sticker, nice, that will go on my sticker table right over here off to the side. And these are some white G10 scales. Now, uh, there are three different options available, and this is for the, uh, what is it called? <laughs> the Axon Mini. So this is my... Um, end cut carbon fiber Axon Mini, and I think this was the DLC coated version, not not their black wash, it's a DLC coated one. Uh, you can tell because of how the the wear marks look on it. It looks slightly polished, and yeah, I mean the the blade looks a little a little grimy. I, I was using this a lot. It's such a wonderful little guy to use. It really is. But I enjoy this knife so much, I decided to. Uh, invest in some scales eventually i'll be dying them but i want to i want to rock a little um stormtrooper action going on here and uh these actually got to me pretty darn fast it took like two days and i i only chose the free shipping so uh, depending on where they ship their stuff from i guess I suppose i'm pretty close so yeah this is the scales nice high quality looking i'm assuming these are also made from uh who is it? Who is it that makes this knife? Best Tech? I'm pretty sure it's Best Tech that makes this guy. So here we have off to the side a bunch of stuff that I will be using. I have disinfectant wipes, a giant tote tube of them, some KPL, and then my Weeha bits and a stick of Loctite for that pivot. I don't really use it for the body screws or the pocket clip. It's mainly for that pivot because it does tend to back out on me after a little while. So let's go ahead and tear this guy down. The pivot is a T8, the bodies are T6s. So we'll start with the uh, <clears throat> with the body screws to access for the clip. It's actually on the inside, very clean. I like how they do that. And the, uh, the tooling on these screws, while they are T6 and I'm not the biggest fan of them, they are titanium and they are very well machined. So that is, uh, as, as again, as much as I hate T6s, and I know a lot of people don't like T6, but um, I don't have any trouble disassembling this knife, hardly ever, so. But uh, I'll be holding on to the end cut carbon fiber scales. Um, they'll just be kind of sitting and collecting dust until I start working on I suppose practicing on doing different finishes on different kinds of material. I think it would be cool to one day make this kind of a, I don't know, a fancier looking knife one day. I'm thinking, you know, semi-polished uh, carbon fiber to bring out more of that uh, end grain visual texture. And then eventually getting those, uh, what was it called? The Mokutai backspacer and clip. I think one day this would be a pretty sweet little gentleman carry but for now it's still going to be a a, a a nice sturdy little, little edc it could definitely be even a a fifth pair fifth pair uh fifth pocket carry so there's that this is all the pieces you see everything just falls apart so this guy is still pretty darn clean i, I could be very tedious sometimes when it comes to cleaning my shit but yeah that's, that's a good thing so these are the uh, 
titanium liners. You know what? I have a little, uh, where is it? Here it is. A little flashlight with a, a magnet on the end. Yeah, so tie liners, the only pieces. Oh, there's a bit. So it's gonna be the pivot, the um, steel washer that the bearings right on, the backspacers, stop pin. Everything else is pretty much going to be tie, which is pretty darn nice. So with these scales, I can set them off to the side, knock out that. There it is. Oh, T6. I'm thinking about getting another stubby Weeha because it's just kind of annoying sometimes having to switch between the, the bits. I know it takes like three seconds or less to to find the other bit and then to rip out the one that's in there and then plug it in. Um, but would that just be an impulse buy? Yeah, probably. But, uh, I mean, we're all kind of do that kind of stuff anyway. So, yeah, this is the other line. This is the lock bar side. And while taking this out, we're going to go ahead and flex this just a little bit to increase the snappiness of it. Eventually, it'll go back. Um, but I just, I prefer to do this every time I do any, like, reassemblies, disassemblies, whatever you want to call it. Uh, just to bring back that snappiness. The action's still wonderful on it, even after it's well, you know, broken in. But, um, yeah, I just do that. That's just one of my routine maintenance things. So, here we go. I could, you know what, let me go ahead and take a little disinfecting cloth and just run it through everything at this point. that the backspacer so i was looking at pictures and correct me if i'm wrong but i was looking at pictures of their upgrade kit for the backspacer and clip and it looks like the mokutai damascus whatever it's called the fancy one right you guys know what i'm talking about um it looks like it's end cut so kind of like how on the the devo stout how on you know the inner portion you see all the beautiful pattern but on the back it's just kind of like the end cut kind of pattern i think it's like that so i don't i don't know if that's you know for me but and it's also like a hundred something dollars i think it was like 150 bucks it's kind of a or or more actually i'm honestly not 100 sure at the moment but I know it was a good chunk of money just for a clip and a backspacer. I understand that, you know, these fancy materials do hold do hold value and, you know, it takes a long time to make them, machine them, and there's a lot more work that goes into it. So, you know, there's a justification for that. But um, because the finish on that is kind of a higher polish, I'm thinking, you know what, probably by the time I do get that, I'm not going to be using the knife as much. And there are some knives where it, it's not so much that I've retired them. I've just done upgrades to them that make them a little bit more delicate, per se. At least the finish on the scales. Like, um, if you guys have ever watched any of my uh, review videos, uh, a couple of my size comparison knives, they have been heavily modified. Uh, my PM2 has um, essentially, like, semi-polished uh scales on it and it looks gorgeous but i'm not gonna hard use that knife i mean you shouldn't be hard using a pm2 anyway but um that's just my little thing and then with uh what else the what's it called can't forget it right now um <laughs> i'm so blanking on it right now the 940, the Osborne 940 from Benchmade. I have full zirconium scales and clip on that. And I, I carried it for a while, taking it to work, but it ended up just being, well, while it is still a wonderful knife, it ended up just being a little bit too big for what I what I need. Um, but that, that spade point is a blade shape that I absolutely love. And Regardless of how thick it is behind the edge, it's still a wonderful cutter. Uh, I had to reprofile it. I don't remember what I reprofiled it to, 
but I mean, that thing is freaking laser through paper and cardboard, which is typically the stuff that I go through anyway. So there is the one liner. You can go ahead and put the pivot screw, just pop the sucker in there. Uh, T6 bit is on there. We can start putting the body screws on. Make sure there's a body screws. I think this is gonna be a cool look to it. Um, I probably completely skipped over talking about the different variants of the aftermarket scales. They're still manufactured and sold on Vero Engineering's website. But um, there were white G10, and then there was natural JG10, which I was very tempted to get those. Um, and then there was also red end cut carbon fiber. The, the pictures on the website just don't do it justice. I can't really pick out the red. Plus, I don't like the color red anyway. So that, that was a definite no for me. So we're going to go ahead and put the washer on the side where you can actually see the little track from the bearings. It's going to be down. And then putting the bearings on. All right. This is a question I have for all of you. And it would be cool if somebody... You know gives her two cents do you guys put with the open side facing the blade or the closed side what i mean by that like do you put it down like that or do you put it down like that i've found no difference between the two um and sometimes i even mix them up but my ocd sometimes gets the better of me and i ended up uh, you know mirroring it let's get some kpl <clears throat> Let's do, let's do the heavy. And I'm doing the heavy because um, I want to increase, I guess the overall, oops, that just fell out of there. The overall force of like how, how much force is needed to actually get the blade out. Go ahead and clean up a little bit. I don't expect that much to come out. That ah, should be fine. Okay. Now the blade. Sit it there. Where is the stop pin? There it is. Tiny ass little stop pin. Set that there. Put it back. You can do just that there and that there. Stack the bearing um, like that. <clears throat> Put a little bit of juice like that. And then which side is it? Oop. Oh, there it is. That side. So I'll put that side down. And then the backspace here goes like this. Yeah yeah okay now for the lock side so we can start putting the clip together this is gonna be pretty cool looking i'm gonna be carrying this thing a little bit more now <clears throat> uh, i don't know if i mentioned it excuse me <clears throat> <coughs> oh my voice is going a little hoarse happens every once in a while but i don't think i mentioned during my review the uh the screws for the pocket clip they look like they're from two different runs one was like older one's newer i i don't know what's up with that i mean they work perfectly fine they're not stripped or anything um but i just thought that was kind of interesting that they had like two different finishes on them maybe they got mixed up during like assembly but uh yeah did I? Those are pretty darn short. Oh, there is. No, I was just cross-threading it like an idiot. Yeah, let's cross-thread an expensive knife. Okay, okay. Yeah, nice and snug. So it didn't go anywhere. Well, I hope it wouldn't go anywhere. And everything should just snap into place. Pinch that lock bar. 
put the body screws on while we have that T6 bit in. <clears throat> Where is it? And there it is. Now that one almost down all the way. There it is. Okay. Almost there. Oh, jeez. What happened? Oh, that's from the... <laughs> okay. I will put that pivot on in a sec. Actually, you know what? Let me loosen up <clears throat> these body screws. I don't want to have any issues when putting the... Uh, pivot in so let me get my lock stick a <laughs> lock stick lock tight stick if we don't want any lock stick this thing looks ratty and i've only used it a couple times let's give this pivot a little clean just wipe it with the uh little cloth here Get any kind of gunk off of those threads there. And yeah, I mean, just take a look at that. There's a good bit of gunk on that. So, I'll just go ahead, give this guy a dip, drop it, and get stuff everywhere. That's the only downside to titanium hardware is that it doesn't stick to any bits that are magnetic. Jeez. Okay. Okay. All right, that should be more than enough. Let's just oh, drop it again. Come on. Jeez, okay. Get that there. Where is it? There it is. What is going on? Oh, I need to tighten that a little bit more. Huh, something feels a little weird. Did I flex that lock bar too much? Possibly. Is something sticking out where it shouldn't be? I think it's that uh, stop pin. I don't know if that stop pin's seated all the way. Sometimes giving things a little bit of a tap helps. Let's get these guys nice and snug. I think I might have flexed that lock bar just a hair too much. Yeah, I think that's what it is. No, something like the blade looks crooked, almost off centered. No, it is most definitely off centered. It looks horrible. What did I do? It's not even sitting all the way. I think it is that stop pin. I don't think that stop pin is actually seated all the way. Okay, well, I am going to have to loosen some stuff up actually just take it off completely Doo -doo. okay and the pivot i'm pretty sure it's that stop and i don't think it's sitting in the other side properly and i just cranked everything down on it really hope i didn't mess that up probably did Okay, what is going on? That's in all the way. Yep, yep. Oh, you know what? It was the, uh... The bearing. I don't think the bearing was seated all the way. Let's put that back in. No captured pivot on this, so that's definitely not, um... You know, a possible issue.
thinking I might have actually flexed a lock bar a little too much. Wait, does this actually have a capture pivot? It does. I I apologize. I didn't remember that it had one. It went down all the way. Hmm. It's very shallow captured pivot, actually. Just line that up. It looks pretty flush. Go ahead and put that on there. Okay, okay. Looks good, looks good. What is going on? I still feel like something is not lining up right. No, that uh, pivot is being held down. But there's something in the way. Okay, you know what? Just in case it is, I will flex the lock bar out. Because that might actually be adding too much pressure and keeping everything else from sitting properly. So that is my fault completely. I guess I just flex it too much. A couple little pushes in the opposite way. Should help. Get them clip screws back in. Oh. They're so small. There it is. Oh. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Everything's sticking to it, and then nothing's sticking to it. There we go. So I'm pretty sure that was it with the uh, with a lock bar just being pushed over way too much. Everything should sit nice now. That sounded nice. Looks good. Looks nice and tight in there. Yep. That's it. The captured pivot is captured. <laughs> All right, let's put the, uh, let's just go ahead and put the pivot on it now. There's like no Loctite left over on it. <laughs> That's fine. Honestly, most of my knives, I don't even really use Loctite much anymore because I just don't ever really seem to need it as much as I thought I would. Oh, yes. Yep. That's all I needed to do. Crank that down a little bit. Loosen it up a little bit. Noise, noise. Get the other T6 body screws on, and we will be finished. Ready to carry. And this came out pretty cool looking. <clears throat> I had remembered mentioning that I was going to pick up their, <clears throat> I believe it was like the Synapse Mini, I think. It was a recent drop of them, and the variant that I wanted just actually didn't exist i would have to buy two knives to really get what i wanted and well i'm not made of money so i decided you know what i'm just gonna take the loss um i'm sure i will get a chance to experience it much later like uh 
like this knife for example like i didn't show off a vera engineering knife till like the, the company was like over a year old and they already had like six five or six different models so i mean it would be nice to check out like everything out there and you know just be able to do that kind of stuff but i don't really have all the time in the world either so time and money is something that uh I'm always longing for more of. I'm sure a lot of you guys can definitely relate. Perfectly centered action is beautiful. Again, it does have that KPL heavy, so it's not going to be super drop shutty. But as the um, lubricant does break down and get into all the little nooks and crannies where it belongs, um, it'll definitely smoothen out. But yeah, lock up is nice and solid zero up and down side to side non-existent this thing is genuinely built like a little tank once everything's actually put together well this is a very tanky little uh feeling knife it's uh quite nice so yeah that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this little video of mine this little disassembly knife upgrade and ramble uh go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you aren't already because we have some giveaways coming up. I want to actually show that off to you really quick. We're getting close to a thousand subscribers. It's very slow, it's creeping up there. I'm, I'm in no rush, right? But what you will get, one lucky individual will get a little starter knife collection. So what it's gonna be, this is a brand new Gerber Paraframe. Never carried, never used, just flicked a couple times just so I could be able to do that one day. And it still kind of hurt my thumb. But that's going to be the beater knife you can just throw around, do whatever. This is a Civivi Mini Praxis. This is, in my opinion, the perfect EDC budget knife. Um, I think that people with larger grips will like this because of that full-size finger choil. Um, so you can carry it down here and back there. It's nice very slicey and has a wonderful wonderful edge and then the nicest one here is going to be a fully customized by yours truly a cgrb this is the ria from knife center this was their exclusive um s35 vn blade material and marbled carbon fiber so i put a rather interesting look on it so everything here has been uh modified and the action is still absolutely wonderful this is a, a definite banger of a starter collection so if you guys are interested go ahead and subscribe because the giveaway is only going to be for subscribers obviously so, with that being said i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and take care